amazing how much rust you can hold together with a little bit of black paint. But this bicycle has a fairly newish saddle, so it's probably in regular use. Well, it looks as if generations of woodworm have dined happily in this room. Now, this is a room that appears to be very typically English. It's dark, it's masculine, it has wonderful Tudor Beethoven linen fold paneling. But it's got a touch of the Scot in it as well. Just look at this dresser. Thistles, St. Andrew's crosses, so maybe someone with a slight Scottish interest. Even though it's a very cosy domestic room, it definitely belongs to someone who gets around. This person is a bit of a globe trotter, as happy lying in the sun drinking ouzo as they are going wild with the Nescaf in Baltimore. There's rampant pachydermophilia everywhere, lots of elephants thundering over every available surface. Possibly this person has some African connections, or maybe they're a tiny bit superstitious. It's someone who likes gadgets likes comfort and things to be as simple and efficient as possible. So there's a lazy Susan and there's an adjustable toaster for those long, lazy breakfasts. I notice also there's an ecologically sensitive Sony Walkman here. Maybe it belongs to a rather large person. This study is rather dawnish. There's nothing very fancy about it. So it's quite clearly a serious workplace. It belongs to someone or some people who are very industrious. Now, it's quite clear that no word processor has ever darkened these doors. But I'm puzzled by the three superannuated typewriters, three desks. Maybe there's a family at work here. Perhaps the three bears finally spilling the beans on Goldilocks in their memoirs. And there are lots of pipes here, so it's a bit of a Sherlock Holmes figure. Now, it's not surprising to find that he's a fan of the most intellectual sport of all, namely cricket, but he's also a bit of an action man, fond of squash and tennis. The most interesting thing, though, is the Academy Award of boiled egg consumption. <laughs> This is the playroom of someone who likes making music and sharing it with his friends because all the furniture's arranged in a semicircle around the piano, so they have at-home concert parties here. But this person not only likes making music, he likes making noise. There's a huge array of percussion instruments like maracas and all sorts of weird ethnic-looking flutes from Africa and Australia. And what home would be complete without a pair of ocarinas? There are plenty of decorative animals in the bedroom, from Africa and India. And there are working animals too, like those thrifty porkers. Now this person's idea of some light late night reading seems to consist of plowing through 10 or 12 rather arcane cricket books. It's not surprising then that the carpet's the color of a cricket pitch. Let's look at the evidence. The antiquated word processors. The wooden wireless the love of noise making. Who lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lloyd. And now... ...well-known English madman who goes on the... <laughs> ah, five. Glorious, eccentric, yes. English. Right, now, is, is it... Um, and there wasn't a single clue there, right? Is it an astrologer? Will you come through? I know, I'm Mr. I must apologize for the illiteracy of my friend, Mr. Bungalow Chris Tarrant over there. It is, in fact, astronomy. Yes, I know. It wasn't a This is not Russell Brown. The bike was a clue. The, the instruments, the typewriters are famous. There was a globe or two. There wasn't a lot of astronomy in those pictures. Where have you hidden all your telescopes? Uh, well, they're in the garden, you see. I've got my observatories outside. There's one telescope in the porch, and they very carefully avoided that coming in, because they also avoided the xylophone in the drawing room. Yes, the xylophone. <laughs> well, you would, wouldn't the you? The xylophone, yeah, we decided that instrument yes, would make it all yes, a bit too yes. clear and so on.
But it is a ma got a marvellous home. Have you been there a long time? Perhaps? I've been there 21 years. I mean, I went down to Selsey, a little village right, in, right on the south coast, because I like it and I know it all my life. And I went there 21 years ago and I wouldn't leave it for anything. Uh, the house itself, I know very little about its past history, but I am fairly certain it began life as a barn. It was certainly standing in 1671, at least the thatched path was, and I'm quite sure there was a barn of a big farm there, but more than that I don't know. Right, and you've been on chat shows, but of course, that's the point, is his show. His show is not a chat show, right, but it's a television show, and it's the longest running television show in the It's been going for a long world. time now, it is now, actually, it's been going for a long time. We, we began in 1957, and the um, BBC said they put on a show called The Sky at Night, and put it on once every four weeks for three months to see how it went, and that was 33 years ago, we're still going. Very good. Well, if this was have a go in the old Bravo. days, everyone would applaud that. Bravo. 33. <laughs> glorious year. 33. Glorious One third year. of a century. One third of a century. And do you want to go on for the rest of this century? I will if I can, yes. I mean, I'm getting very old now. As you said, I'm extremely ancient. I didn't say that. I said, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> no, I'm right. not, I'm, I, I'm, you compared I'm, him to Noah. <laughs> you can't get out of that. I'm not quite as old as that. I'm in my 6th or 7th year, but I'm, I still play tennis and cricket. Right, right. Because I am a Lord's Tavern, a spin bowler. Spin bowler as no, well. No, and, that's one. And you want to go on at least to the end of the century because there's an eclipse coming up of the sun? August the 11th, 1999. And if you want to see that one, you've got to go down to Cornwall. And if you want to go and see it, I invite you to book your hotel early. Now, you are famous as the best undressed man or non-dressed man or the best undressed man on television for your sartorial wear. So I think we should point out that you're looking very elegant this evening. I will say one thing. I may not be a tailor's dummy, very far from it, but I always wear the right clothes on the right occasions. Yeah. And you're also supposed to be the fastest speaking man on television. Is that true, too? I never timed it. I don't know at all. You have to take some of those advice. Well, we'll time, we'll time this on the playback machine. Certainly. But it's been a delight to have you. Nice it always to see is. You. Always good to see you. This is Thank our you, little David. symbol to you. Thank to show you very how much grateful indeed. we are to you. Thank Patrick. you very much indeed. Uh, thanks for being with us. Nice to see you. Great to have Patrick Moore with us. I wonder who's in part two. We'll be right back. There you are. Yeah. Yeah.